Hi, I'm Sam. Have you ever considered whether you could actually become a real-life superhero? Well, with scientists often inspired by the natural world to really push the boundaries of technology and human capabilities, this might not be such a ridiculous question after all. Oh, oh, I've got a cramp in my hip. <laughs> I mean, they're a sexy pair of undies, there's no denying. Ready to go. Now, I can't think of any self-respecting superhero that isn't rippling with muscle. Just like me. So first up, let's get some super strength. <laughs> Just like the Incredible Hulk, there are many accounts of people shifting extraordinary weights when under stress, like lifting cars off pedestrians. But these feats of superhuman power pale into insignificance when compared to the strongest member of the animal kingdom, the humble dung beetle. Onthophagus taurus has been found to really push its weight around, or more specifically, 1,141 times its body weight. These beetles push around huge balls of dung, collecting the faeces for food, and also use their stocky bodies to wrestle each other for more dung and a mate. But where does their super strength come from? Well, at least partly from their exoskeleton. Having a strong segmented skeleton on the outside of your body takes away a lot of the work your muscles actually have to do. Indeed, with tough plates like these and some muscle stretching across them, they can act a little bit like a lever and fulcrum. So just how are humans getting on replicating the design? Amazing. Bit of gaffer job. <laughs> I actually feel a bit stronger. Nice. Well, the downfall of a strong exoskeleton like this one is that they're really heavy, which is thankfully why insects have remained so small. And this means that a version big enough to fit a human would have to be light enough for us to carry and thus make the plates inherently weaker. However, a team from Japan's Tsukuba University and robotics company Cyberdyne, yes, like the infamous corporation from Terminator, have developed a hybrid assistive limb known as HAL-5. Similar to those in nature, this exoskeleton allows people to lift around five times their own body weight. Mine at least lets me pop a beer. So that's a good start. <laughs> so that's strength sorted. Next, I want to climb walls, a little bit like Spider-Man. But to be honest, spiders aren't all that great at climbing. In fact, you've probably seen them trapped in the bath yourself. Teams all around the world are instead looking at geckos and studying their feet, trying to replicate their incredible climbing ability. And one team from the University of Massachusetts have designed a material called Gekskin, that was also named as one of the top five scientific breakthroughs of 2012. Gecko's feet are densely packed with fingerprint-style ridges called lamellae, which are in turn covered by microscopic hairs called CT, which are in turn covered by thousands of even smaller projections called spatulae. These are so small and combined cover such a vast surface area that they actually interact on a molecular scale with the surface they're climbing on, generating attractive forces known as van der Waals forces. This means they can climb almost any surface, even glass, and can reportedly hang upside down from the ceiling from just one toe. Now, Gekskin has allowed these scientists to perform similarly amazing feats, enabling them to carry up to 700 pounds with just a postcard-sized sheet of this synthetic skin, mimicking everything from the gecko's tendons right through to those tiny spatulae. So now I am incredibly strong. I can stick to walls, but what about the power of mind control? A bit like Professor X. Subscribe to Earth and Love. Well, science is actually really gaining ground in the area of mind control. Researchers at Cyberkinetics Neurotechnology Systems in the US are designing a technology that enables paralyzed people to physically interact with their surroundings by using their minds to control robotic limbs. Amazing and exciting science, definitely. But once again, nature is way ahead of the pack on this one. There are loads of parasites that are masters of mind control. Spores of cordyceps, a type of fungus, can infiltrate the body of bullet ants. These infamous insects, who normally have it their own way, ascend into the canopy at the command of the fungi and bite down onto a leaf, clamping their jaws tightly shut, and will remain that way until they die. The cordyceps then grows up, feasting on the ant's tissues, apart from the muscles keeping those jaws closed. And then, once it's ready, it will sprinkle yet more spores to create an army of zombie ants. So, I'm super strong, I can climb walls, and I can control mines. So, let's step it up with flight. Since time immemorial, humans have dreamt of taking to the skies just like Superman. But just how close are we in reality? Wingsuits, inspired by flying squirrels, certainly enable us to glide long distances. 
The only downfall being that you also happen to be rocketing towards the ground and need a parachute to prevent yourself from smashing into it. So perhaps not quite the kind of flight I'm looking for, but very cute when you see a sugar glider doing the same thing and without the need for a parachute. But in July this year, a team from AeroVelo won the prestigious Igor I. Sikorsky Human Powered Helicopter Competition. They achieved liftoff with a modified bicycle and some huge rotary blades, being off the ground for a whopping 64 seconds and achieving a height just over 3 metres. Which is still very impressive and the best that anyone's ever done, but still not quite what I'm after. But what is impressive are Swifts, who can stay on the wing for 3 years. Sadly, our skeletons are just too dense and heavy and our muscles are too small to be able to flap wings big enough to carry us. So there's probably not much danger of me actually catching an arch villain, particularly if the best I've got is a pedal-driven flying machine. But at least the cake looks cool. So with flight kind of sorted, what good is a superhero if they can't sneak up on people without being seen? Yep, we're talking invisibility. Incredibly, this technology is not that far from reality, with a team from Tokyo University creating a cloak that uses cameras to record images from behind you and project it onto your front. This is similar to a tactic employed by cuttlefish, who try to blend their dorsal surface to the shades and textures of the ground beneath them. Researchers from Texas have gone for a different tactic. They've created an ultra-thin cloak that reduces the amount of light scattering and channels it around an object. If you imagine light bending around you to reform on the other side as if you aren't there at all, in just the same way that running water flows around a pebble and reforms on the other side. So far, they haven't managed to produce this effect in the spectrum visible to the naked eye, but they have managed to make an 18 centimeter cylinder invisible to radio waves by covering it in this incredible cloak. In essence, certain species of hawk moth also produce a similar trick, albeit without the need for invisibility cloaks. Instead, they produce a range of high-frequency clicks in response to a bat's sonar. This then distorts the feedback to the bat, which hunts primarily via sound waves rather than sight, effectively making the moth invisible. So that's me, Super Sam, inspired by nature and created by science. Not entirely convinced. See you next time. The world's smallest periodic table was engraved on a human hair. And it was one of my hairs. And I've got it here. We have about 100,000 hairs on our heads. A sea otter, on the other hand, has about 165,000 per square centimetre.